Hey everyone, my name is JB Brubaker. I play guitar in August Burns Red. I'm joined by some of my bandmates here. We got Matt Greiner, our drummer, Dustin Davidson, our bass player, and uh, Brent Rambler, uh, another guitar player in the band. And we are coming to you from quarantine. Um, we're all at home, we're all staying safe. We hope you guys are doing the same. And uh, we're currently on the cover of the latest issue of Revolver, and they asked us to be a part of their The Last Show series, um, which is helping to benefit road crews um, through an initiative Live Nation started uh, that's gonna kind of raise money for all these road crews who have lost out on a lot of work um, due to COVID-19. So we're gonna be talking about our last shows, um, looking ahead to the future a little bit, and uh, we're just gonna jump right in. So first question for, for you guys is, tell me about the last show you played. All right. I'll take this one. The last show we played uh, was unique to say the least. Obviously it was the day that we found out that we were going home. Uh, there was already a good idea that we were going home, but it was a weird feeling to get on stage and like we do this little thing where all of us get together and we powwow, you know, hands in and on the count of three say something. And it was weird to know that the common denominator that night between all of us is that we were going home and we had never done this before. We had never canceled a tour early, three shows in, 72 hours later. And I remember, of course, the whole night you're thinking like, dude, this is a total bomber. We just prepared for this tour for weeks and months and we're playing this sideshow on the Kills Which Engage tour. We should be playing tomorrow night um, in Philly. You know, we were looking forward to that show, of course, because it's our hometown show. Just, just such a bizarre feeling to get on stage knowing it's gonna be the last time you're playing for the for, uh, foreseeable future. Yeah, and like you said, like the sideshow was a smaller show compared to the first two we were playing, you know, just um, a quick stop in Louisville, Kentucky. And um, I just remember thinking, man, it'd be so good if we could just get to this weekend because we had that sold out show in Philly, sold out show in Silver Spring, and just being like, come on, come on, come on, come on, let's just get to the weekend, get to the weekend at least. But, you know, that didn't happen. And I remember, you know, we got the call that at first, it was just going to be like arena levels that weren't going to be allowed to tour anymore. And we were like, okay, that's great. And I know that like uh, the crew guys caught wind of that right away. And I was kind of bummed because I didn't want them to, you know, have that hope because there was that other call coming. And then that other call was what, you know, kind of put the ax on everything, I guess, was the second, the second call that needed to take place between Live Nation promoters. And I just remember that being really weird because you had that like moment of hope that like, okay, maybe our tour can keep going because it's gonna be not an arena tour and small enough. And then it was just like literally 30 minutes to an hour later. It was like, never mind. <laughs> You're going. And the only thing that happened to me was, the, uh, was when the NBA suspended their season and like March yeah. Madness just straight up like canceled, not postponed. That's when I was like, which I believe was the same day uh, as that Louisville show. Maybe it was the day before, but when that happened, I was yeah. like, Okay, well, we're definitely going home now. <laughs> right? That's exactly what I thought. Same thing. Yeah. And it was easy to see because we were in that, we were playing that, that, that sports bar that had the venue in the back. And so you walk in and I remember all loading was just like NBA canceled, NCAA canceled, blah, blah, blah. And everyone just like, what is happening? Yeah, ter then, terrible vibes. Like it was an endless <laughs> stream of bad yeah. news and – just and it was pouring outside too. Like oh, yeah. it was rainy. It, it, it was the perfect weather for the uh, <laughs> the vibe that we were all dealing with that day. And I can remember yeah. thinking as we were playing the show, like the crowd came out and we had a, we had a nice turnout. It was a week night yeah. and people behaved like nothing was going on. Like the show was completely normal, and you know kids were moshing and singing along and no one seemed to care that they were in this tiny space. Like people were on top of each other. There was crowd <laughs> surfing. And yeah. I remember walking off stage and there was uh, a kid who was like, JB, JB, uh, take a picture with you. And I'm just like, I don't know. thanks for coming, dude. I like yeah. scurried in the back <laughs> into the green room. Like I, I didn't really want to, it just felt like. Uh, yeah, that was the, that was the vibe at every show too. If you recall, yeah. because like every show was, well, actually I guess Cleveland was sold out and yeah. rock count that, that night was really good. Cause I was wondering like how many people aren't going to come out to the show uh, because of coronavirus scare right now. Right. Yeah. That was still a good turnout. So. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah almost everyone showed up. Was, to, I guess maybe people, to, yeah. to Brent's point, though, like the feeling was like, oh, this is really disappointing. But I don't, I don't know if you guys had the same sense, but to Brent's point, there was this looming threat of this thing could be over and on any given day. And the first thought you have when you wake up on the bus is like, oh, I don't know if we're going to play a show tonight. So I yeah. had this sense of relief, too, knowing that it was the right thing to do and also that – Everyone was doing this as well, to, to JB's point, um, in another interview, <laughs> yeah. which was, you know, well, we're all in this together, which is yeah. what everybody's saying, but it's really true. And we were all sort of thinking, well, is this going to be the last day? Is this going to be the last day? And so there was just sort of like, okay, everyone's last day is today. We're going home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, guys, we uh, obviously have a pretty sweet crew. Um, we're good friends with our crew. A lot of the guys have been with us for – over a decade, which is wild. Um, Brent, can you, can you talk about who our crew guys were on that tour um, and kind of your relationship with them? Uh, mostly, you know, sorry, from oldest to newest. Um, so, you know, Josh, <laughs> Josh has been with the band since we started. He's our tour manager. Um, 17 years. <laughs> yeah, he's been 17 years. <laughs> he's been, you know, take a little bit of time off to complete college, but other than that, he's been around. Um, but yeah, and he's been friends with a lot of the guys in the band um, and some recruit guys for, you know, since we were kids. So, right. you know, he's been around forever. And then we have Kevin is our next old, uh, sorry, Kip is actually our next oldest crew member. Um, Kip's been selling merch uh, for a full-time basis since what, 2008, 2009. I think he missed a tour in 2009 um, because he had an art, art show, I believe, but you know, since the, that time he's been with us nonstop ever since similar to Josh, he's been a great friend of ours since, you know, we were younger. And then, um, uh, next Kevin, Kevin's our guitar tech. He's the only guitar tech that we've ever had on a full-time basis. Um, he's awesome. He's our Canadian friend. <laughs> um, our only and, Canadian friend. All right. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> um, but yeah, you know, he's been around uh, forever. He's the first guitar tech we ever, we ever took on tour with us um, back when we did our co-headline tour with Bring Me the Horizon for the AP tour. And then um, following him, we have Ray, uh, who's been our touring photographer since, what, 2015, I believe. Um, yeah. And, yeah, he's, you know, he's been – awesome he's been a, a huge blessing for us you know that was something that we never realized we needed until we had it and you know now we take him everywhere we possibly can and then we have chris who is our sound guy chris has been with us since 2016 um he's also from pennsylvania so it's nice to have a local sound guy he comes out to our practices and he helps us set up everything and make sure that we're good to go for all of our rehearsals um so he goes above and beyond with that um and then we have two new guys who were supposed to start with us this tour. Um, we had met one before, uh, Carlos. He was working as a light tech on the Parkway Drive tour that we did. Um, so we had a relationship with him already from that. And then we had our newest member um, that we didn't really know yet much, um, but we had some mutual acquaintances, Matt's been before. Um, his name is Brent. We were going to call him Bront because my name is Brent. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, and you know, he's from, he's another local guy from, from Pennsylvania. And, uh, he's, he seems like he's going to be an awesome guy and we're excited to work with him further, but <laughs> you better know him, Brent. yeah, we barely got to know him. We barely got All to right. know him, but, uh, you know, the first couple of days were great and Matt loved him. So he did a killer job. And then also someone who we consider a uh, crew for us is our driver, Steven. Um, he's been driving us safely for years. Um, we always take the right. same bus and, um, we always ask for Steven and, because we know he cares. Uh, he's the tallest man alive. <laughs> he's six, <laughs> six foot 11 and, uh, he's, he's awesome. He gets us oh, really? from point A to point B. My wife loves that he has another small child because that means he'll drive even safer because he's got a, <laughs> right. got a baby to get home to as well. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, we love those crew guys. They're the best. Um, they make the show go. They are as important as it gets. We can't put on a good show without um, any of these guys. And if we don't have them play a show, sometimes Kevin has to miss our Christmas show and it's 
terrible. <laughs> this thing's very hectic. It gets yeah. a lot more hectic without them. Yeah, so right. we prefer to have all of these guys around as much as we possibly can. Yeah, so if you guys got a couple bucks, there's a lot of crews, like we were saying earlier, who, who could use your help right now. It's, it's hard to work if you're in the uh, touring industry. Even when you're at home, you know, these guys would be working at their local clubs and stuff, but it's all shut down. So um, it's tough right now. And if you, if you have some, some bucks and can share, uh, donate to that Live Nation Crew Relief Fund. Um, Matt, I want to ask you a question. Going back to that last show we played, um, we were playing a couple new songs off of uh, our latest record, Guardians, that just came out on April 3rd. And it was it would have been only our third time playing these new songs. Do you do you have any memories of playing um, the new songs we were doing on that tour, uh, doing on that tour, Bones and uh, Defender? Can you think about you know how those went over? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. We were obviously really excited to play the new stuff. We had just gotten done with basically a year of constellations. So right. <laughs> we were excited to play anything different than what we had been playing. <laughs> I mean, we love playing constellations. It's an important record to us, but if you do enough of any good thing, it can become monotonous. So um, playing new songs was like really exciting regardless or irregardless of what songs they were. But I was most excited for Defender because of mainly just because of the breakdown. <laughs> I mean, sure. um, when, when, when the record was mixed and finished and we heard, heard the parts and you could listen to them a couple of times, it was like, you can just imagine the way the crowd's going to respond to a part like that. And it was just sort of a gimme. And, but you were still assuming that, you know, you hadn't really taken it out and taken it on the test track and actually like see see how it did and and so once we 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 started defender i believe we were playing defender first out of the two new songs we played our first show in cleveland and got to the part where it's just jake and he screams who will deliver the sentence um and you know the room just erupts and it's just like a little pat on the back like a little bit of affirmation like okay you know we Still got it, you know. We it's, get it. it's 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 yeah. yeah, it's easy. Yeah. It's easy to question. Like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like the litmus test for how good a song is 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 how much do people respond to it live, at least in our genre and with the style that we play. And so if people are going nuts and they're they're either moshing or they're singing along, both of which are really affirming for you on stage. So I remember that first show in Cleveland playing Defender and as soon as Jake screamed by himself and then we all came in together, it was like, oh man, this is why we do this. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. I missed it already, guys. Hopefully we can uh -huh. do it again before the yeah. is over. Yeah. yeah, right. All right, we're gonna do something, we're gonna get away from this last show thing and get into some hypotheticals. Um, let's assume it's the end of the world. It's not really, we're just, we're preventing the end of the world right now by all staying at home. Um, hypothetically, it's the end of the world. We get to play on our own concert. There's four of us here right now. We're each going to pick one band to play on the bill, and we're each going to pick three songs that the bands are going to play that we care about. They can play more, of course, but for the sake <laughs> of, of not drawing out 15 songs set list per band. Um, Dustin, do you want to go first? Who, who's a band you would put on our, on our final show? It's a final show because oh, it's the end of the world. So yeah, it's it's the it's the final show. <laughs> uh, I'm a uh, well. We don't have to play. We just get to enjoy it. We just get to enjoy it. Okay, Blink yeah. 22 with the original lineup. Oh yeah. Well, I you, think might Travis, you might have stolen You might have stolen in there too. But uh, right, right. The classic lineup. The classic lineup. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Three songs. What three? So pick three songs that they have to play. Three songs that they have to play. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm really into neighborhoods still. Uh, it took me a while to get into it, but um, same. The man. Um, now I'm getting the titles messed up. I want to <laughs> say, I want to say, up all night. Yep. Yep. That's, that's a good song. I, I like that song a lot. It's really driving. I like Snake Charmer too because of that riff, but that song's just, yeah, I don't want to see that live. I just really like that song. Yeah. But I'm going to say Up All Night. Uh, I'm a real big fan of When I Was Young, which is off that Dogs Eating Dogs EP. Okay. Um, and then I'd like to see, 
Stockholm Syndrome off self title. Oh, good picks. And they're all like modern, like later blink after their heyday. But I actually agree with you. Like self titled neighborhoods are, are some of their, in my opinion, I went work. back to uh, I went back to take off your pants and jacket the other day because I wanted to. It's been a while, you know. And yeah. uh, a song that stood out to me on that record. It's very different, first off. But a song that stood out to me that I completely forgot about. Online songs. Okay, track two. Mm. Yeah, love that song. That's a good one. Um, Matt or Brent, do either of you guys want to go? Your band in three songs on the final show ever. Uh, I know what I'm picking. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I'm picking because we always play. I'm picking System of a Down. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> we'll do Toxicity, Sugar. Wow. And yeah, I get back to the first one. The OG single. First hit. Yeah, it's so good. And then, you know, Chop Suey, <laughs> of course. Uh, oh, yeah, the classic. We'll go, we'll go with those three. Uh, but yeah, you know, for those of you who don't know, we play System of a Down pretty much before every show we play. Guess the crowd rip roaring. I've only ever gotten to see him play once live, and it was at a huge festival. And I'd love to see them play a club show with us. It'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. Sure, Matt, you want to go? Yeah, I actually had to look this up because I, I'm not good with song names. Uh, right. I'm not good Sorry. with much besides drum beats. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, my sister always gives me a hard time because I'll try to sing somebody's lyrics and she'll be like, you don't even know the words. I'm like, of course I don't know the words. I, I can play the beat, uh, but this is a perfect case scenario. So I would say I'm going to bring it down quite a few notches, but Bon Iver, most okay. specifically, because that's that's what I've been listening to recently a lot um, a lot of, and really anything off um, of self titled, but uh, Perth, uh, and then we'll go with another record, uh, Holocene, I think is what it's called. Um, Halcyon. Uh, H o l o c e n e. I don't even know. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would say Flume off off that same record for Emma. That is bringing it down. I'm actually going to bring yeah. it down too. So this is basically going to be a show that's going to be very uh, eclectic. Eclectic, exactly. We'll, yeah. we'll mix our bands up to keep the heavy with the soft. I, I'm going to go with Death Cab, uh, Death Cab for Cutie. Yeah, one of my favorite bands. And uh, if I had to pick three songs, one would be um, "You Are a Tourist" off of Codes and Keys. It's one of my favorite songs ever. Um, I'm going to go with Soul Meets Body off of Plans, which is like the big song from that record. Um, and it's it's a killer song. And I got to pick one more. I'm like looking through the catalog right now on my <laughs> my computer. I, I guess I have to pick something off Transatlanticism because it's like the, the freaking greatest record. Uh, we'll go with... If you like Death Cab, you have to say something off Transatlanticism. <laughs> right, I do, I know. It's, it's hard because it's like endless hits. We'll, we'll go with the freaking title track, Transatlanticism. It's eight minutes and it's it's pretty epic live. So. What, what would have been fun to do is to guess what other people would have said because I would have guessed you would have said Death Cab or you would have <laughs> said like Not A Surf or Mad Pond. I would oh, have actually said Dustin well. would say yeah. um, Blink, <laughs> absolutely. And <laughs> Brent, I don't. I wouldn't have guessed System of a Down, but it, it it also doesn't surprise me. I do love them. I was thinking that Brent was going to say Explosions in the Sky for a second, but mm. yeah, yeah, I've seen them a couple times though, and I don't know. I can't even not, not, not for the last show of the world. Mayor. I know. Oh yeah, John, Explosions in the Sky Justin would be. Explosive this guy would be a great band to watch as the world burns for sure. <laughs> right. Literally. Yeah. It's very fitting. Yeah, they I mean they're like the soundtrack to all these like sad coronavirus commercials right now. <laughs> I just keep hearing explosions in the sky all day long. Like I'm like, oh, what are they on now? Oh, Ford commercial. Oh man. So guys, I'm gonna get, get us back into talking about touring a little bit. Um, for those of you who don't know, we were supposed to be on tour with Killswitch Engage um, in March and April. That tour would have ended a couple weeks ago. And I remember getting home from that tour. Actually, I remember being home and when the tour should have ended, uh, I think the last show was on April 12th. I remember thinking on April 13th when I woke up that morning, man, I should only be getting home from tour right now. We should have mm -hmm. just finished like this, this killer tour. And um, I guess, what, what were you guys most looking forward to about doing that tour? 
I was looking forward to the fact that we were going to be able to, I mean, it's getting harder and harder to find, you know, awesome bands for us to go out and actually, and like support, um, you know, that we haven't been on tour with yet. And Kill Switch Engage was one of those last bands that, you know, we've never toured with them. And uh, that list is growing smaller and smaller. And so for us to have been able to do that after never have hitting the road with them, uh, it was going to be awesome. And, you know, we have a great relationship with Adam D. You know, he produced the first record. So it was going to be exciting to see him again, hang out with him again. And just coming in and knowing that the shows were selling so well and that, you know, we had planned so much around this tour um, as far as the release of the record that it, like everything seemed to be lining up so perfectly. And I was mm-hmm. just really excited for that. Yeah, I was exactly. Just playing shows again. I mean, we hadn't played shows since the, the Christmas Burns Red Festival yeah. in December. Um, mm-hmm. And it, so we, were, we had been home for a while and you kind of started to go stir crazy uh, just being at home. At least I do. Yeah. Right. Um, three months. We were home for three months. Before yeah. you went on tour for three days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And so yeah. I was looking forward to playing shows again. And also just like days off on tour are so fun. I was looking forward to hanging out with our crew guys and, and my friends again. So like, yeah, that, that got taken away too. We didn't have any time to, to really hang out. So. And all the hangout mm-hmm. time we had was sort of just reserved to talking about COVID-19 and speculating yeah. what was going to happen to our tour. Yeah. Like it wasn't a lot of fun back backstage on these on these shows if i can remember yeah. like that was that was my opinion especially in grand rapids like that day was pretty depressing Very as small, everything yeah. just started crumbling and i remember the four of us actually went to dinner after that show in grand rapids and i think that was my favorite time i had of those three days we were on tour where yeah the show was we were done playing we were all loaded out and we went out to dinner one of the last times i've been out to eat maybe it was <laughs> second yeah. to last time i was out to eat since yeah, me too. this whole whole thing started and and I know we talked about coronavirus for most of it, but, but it was fun. We had a couple drinks. We got to joke around a little bit and it was just like a little bit of a reprieve from the heaviness that we were all dealing with during that time. Yeah. So definitely sucks uh, mm-hmm. not being able to play shows, especially when we have this new record guardians that just came out. Like we were, we had really yeah. cool stuff planned around that. We were doing a, uh, a release party at a barcade in Des Moines um that was going to be a lot of fun we were flying some fans in who won a contest to uh to like enjoy that show and go to the after party and then i don't know we had a bunch of like cool listening parties and stuff set up in different cities around the tour as the record was going to come out it just was a lot of like brent was saying i guess you guys were all saying we did so much planning and had this Mm -hmm. awesome setup for a record that we were really proud of and then it all yeah it all came crashing down yeah i i thought in the last couple of weeks i thought what if we had never even started the tour like what if the timing had worked out so that we were ready to go we had done all the work but we never got to play that first show would i feel any better if 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 all the prep work was done and then all of a sudden they shut us down before we we got on the bus and left i'm mm-hmm. like i i don't know that i would have it would have been less of a pain in the butt because we wouldn't have loaded everything in and we could have just stayed yeah. home but i'm i'm glad that at least we got to play the new songs three times <laughs> yeah <laughs> two new songs three times two yeah. yeah a total of six times we played it more in rehearsal than we did live <laughs> um <laughs> And we don't rehearse a lot anymore. So as a band, that is. Right. Um, but no, I, I, I still wouldn't go back and change that. Of course, I wish we would have done the whole tour. But if you play around with the date that everything came crashing down, I, I am still glad that we got three in versus zero in, um, even though it might have been financially more detrimental to us in the end. I don't know. But just, to, you know, just the fact that we got three in this year, uh, it'll be nice to get some more. I, I was excited to get out in front of new uh, fans, potentially. Yeah. I like the idea of winning over people that have never heard of us. And like Brent said, to your point, it's like, it's kind of hard to find bands that match up well enough with us where we can support them. Um, and then um, for us to hopefully be playing for some new ears, and that was an exciting idea, which was definitely going to be the case based on the amount of people coming out to the shows. Yeah, it was definitely yeah. a great opportunity. A lot of new, a lot of new faces. I know that there's a lot of crossover between August Burns Red and Killswitch Engage. If you like one band, the chances are you could like the other band as well. But Killswitch is also a band that's just been at this. 
they've been at, at the top for a long time, kind of this metal, metal core thing, whatever you want to call it. So it was number one, we've been talking about trying to do this for so long. Like I remember talking with Kill Switch's management probably 18 months ago or two yeah. years ago and being like, hey, you know, we are interested in doing something with you guys when it makes sense with our new record, like put the bug in their ear and then it finally came together and then it immediately went away. <laughs> but yeah, we're, uh, we're hoping to get those dates. Um, we're still hoping to play those shows when we're able to get back out and, and do shows again. So fingers crossed it will be uh, sooner than later. But uh, so guys, what are you doing at home right now to, to kind of stay in playing shape? Like suppose, suppose we had to go play a show in two weeks. Would you be able to, to go bang out a show right now? Have you been practicing? Yes, I, I, I could. I've been, <laughs> I mean, I've been, I've been just learning, um, going over and trying to just learn most of the songs on this record to be able to play them live. <laughs> I don't know. At this You're point, know, yeah, at this point, at this point, we don't know like what songs we're going to play. I like sent Dustin a text message yesterday, um, going over that. Uh, dismembered memory I'm pretty much done with it but I sent a message yesterday I'm like does this look right <laughs> is this like like the fast part that's in the middle is this correct because I want to make sure it's right because it took me forever to learn this and then I don't want to have to go break my muscle memory if something's slightly wrong uh, but yeah I think uh, I think I could probably play a show I would just need a little bit yet to, uh, I just need like a day or two to run over the older songs that I haven't been going over but but yeah I just you know, playing guitar every day um, is something I've been doing. I'm also just going back and redoing my real estate courses because why not? <laughs> <laughs> or good productive use of your time. Yeah, yeah. really. Very smart. <laughs> I was I was thinking about what if we still do band practices the way we used to do band practices? Like what if we yeah. only practiced when we were together? We would oh, yeah. all be so rusty by the time yeah. we got back together. But now, and we've been doing this for so long, we practice independently almost, what, 99.9% .9 of the, of, of our, abil or our um, ability to play our instruments comes from practicing individually. So right. <laughs> it's like, this really doesn't affect that at all. Um, I've been, I've been teaching drum lessons. I was teaching a lot and t I've taken the last two weeks off to do some work here. And then farming actually kicks into gear this next week. Um, oh, you have fun. You have fun stuff to do then. Yeah. yeah, it's it's busy. It's definitely busy, but it's a different kind of busy. Like that, like uh, virtual, you know, interaction isn't as satisfying as being able to go out and be with people and right. do life as normal. So it's it's more of a draining busy than it is uh, a rewarding type. Um, yeah. Minus the drumming. You don't do that virtually. <laughs> yeah. Right. Farming simulator. <laughs> Sim farm. You just play Sim farm. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I Justin, think I do once all. I, I, I play every day, but I'm, I'm mainly just writing. So, like, I'm not learning new things, and I'm not, like, hammering old things. So, I would definitely need time to bring stuff together. But I, I usually learn stuff pretty quickly. But um, I'm spending most of my days just – writing new stuff so i would definitely need to hammer some things i'm the same way i'm 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 definitely rusty on like the set right now i was pretty sharp right when we came home from tour and i shot a bunch of lot uh like playthrough videos during that time because yeah. i knew i knew i was you know practice up on that stuff but now that we're home and i know we're gonna be home for a while i'm like oh, i'm gonna work on writing and stuff while i have this opportunity and while writing is is important it definitely doesn't keep my chops as honed as uh practicing or touring does it's a lot of you know mm -hmm. doodling around and i don't know it's, yeah, it's, it's, one, it's different if there's one thing that's going to come out of this quarantine this quarantine for me is that <clears throat> excuse me like everybody's trapped indoors right now so many artists whether they're musicians or i mean painters or writers for television and, and movies hollywood shut down so like everybody has so much time to be able to create something new right now. So I'm, I'm really excited to see the art that comes from this, this dark, strange time. 
Yeah. All the mm-hmm. all the video stuff's going to be years from now, though. Like, when are we going to get season four of Ozark? Is that going to be like twenty twenty three? Like, is that going to get <laughs> yeah. delayed forever? Right. Which, but which no movies. <laughs> so much is going to come yeah. from it too. You know, everybody's got so much time, and it's not like people are just sitting around doing nothing. So right, there'll be yeah. a boom. So what are you guys life. watching at home? Is are are you guys watching through any series right now? Uh, to you know, I just finished season time. three of Ozark. Nice. Oh, so now I'm finishing Baskets, and um. What else did I start? What's Baskets? Baskets is Zach Galifianakis show. He's he plays like a rodeo clown who like is out of work and it's 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 more of like a serious role for him. He's kind of depressed and sad, but it's it's, it's still Zach Galifianakis, so it's still funny. He's just playing like a different character. Uh, it's pretty good. It's on FX, but there's only four seasons. Um, Louis Anderson plays his mom on the show, and that is by far the best part of the show. Is Louis Anderson dressing like a woman playing a woman it's so good <laughs> does such a good job so i recommend that um, have you have you seen zach alfanakis with uh bieber on between the between two ferns yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Seen i haven't seen that one yeah oh man i i've just been watching youtube because you can watch endless amount of amazing content for you know oh i want to learn how to do this yeah just <laughs> when you said you said Bieber, and that reminds me too. I told JB about this show recently, but for those who know Little Dicky, the show Dave uh, is hilarious. It's really watching really? that. Yeah. Oh, it's it's so funny, dude. It's he's funny. Such like, a good actor. Yes. So I've been watching that too. There's one episode of that. I think it came out last night. So I'm gonna watch that tonight. Or oh, tonight. sweet. That's what I'm watching tonight. Yeah. Kate uh, and I are yeah. like we wait for the new episode of Dave every week. We're like, is there a new episode yet? It's got a serious undertone to it. It's oh, very yeah. There's some good. Seri- very serious, like mental mental health yeah. stuff, and yeah, it's I'm not really all. Good. It's not all like the first three episodes are really funny, and then all of a sudden you get hit with like Gata's backstory, and you're like, whoa, this isn't funny at all. This is like yeah. real serious. Like it deals with bipolar and stuff, but that show's cool. Yeah, I, I, I like that show a lot. Matt, what are you what are you watching? Besides YouTube, I mean, honestly, like I said, YouTube. I, That's like I've been your old boy watching. Uh, like clicking through YouTube toy unboxing <laughs> videos. Yeah. I've been. I, I mean, when you're working on projects and you have no idea what you're doing that's a good resource um yeah i sure. liked us and i watched ozark season three i didn't really like it uh it's it's too dark it's too it's not the right i liked it initially but I, it kind of fell off so my parents recently started watching um do you guys remember that show um prison break yes <laughs> So I remember I liking it. it. So I'm going back and watching season one of that, and I I really like it. It's a really fun show. Hmm. More more fun than Ozark. Ozark's not very yeah. fun. Pretty, yeah, pretty yeah. I like I like Ozark. I think we all liked it initially. I just wasn't a huge fan of this last season. I still like it. I especially <laughs> like that relationship with the grandma and that teenage boy. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate, I hate that too. I hate that too, dude. That's I hated it. Watch. Oh, I was like, "Come on!" I was like, "Please uh, don't go there." Oh, come on! Yeah. It's not because it's, it's not because it was gross. I just didn't like it for the storyline. Yeah, it was line. gross, Brent. Well, I, that's not why I hated it though. I hated it more for the storyline. I was like, "Come on, no! Uh, like, don't make them." I, I was hoping it'd be more like a you know, grant, like a, a maternal relationship versus like romantic yeah. relationship. A platonic relationship. Yeah, like, I don't know, but yeah, yeah, I didn't like that, but. I told you all about my dad, about how he, he watched all three seasons of Ozark very quickly because his girlfriend lived in an area they filmed it, so she was very interested in watching that. And he was like, yeah, it was a really good show. What else do you recommend? And I was like, you should watch Breaking Bad. And in like two weeks, he just texted me out of the blue. All he said was season three, episode seven. And I was like, he didn't even tell me, he said, is that where you are in the series? And he's like, yeah, man, LOL. My dad says LOL all the time. Yeah. So I was like, this is crazy. Shout out to you Like two nights ago and he goes, we're starting season five. What? (laughs) My dad has watched the entire series in like a month, maybe even less than that. And um, He's, he, he knows about the movie. He knows about Better Call Saul. So he's just going to keep cruising. He loves it. Mm. Must we be haven't nice. been, I, yeah, we haven't been watching too much TV just because we put Nash to bed at like 7.30 or 8. And then by the time we get downstairs to actually watch a TV show, we watch like one. And then it's usually, it's usually like 
the great British baking show because we're just like, do you want to watch something serious right now? Or do you just want to like chill for an hour before we go to bed and start over again? <laughs> right. That's kind of how Kate and I have been too. Cause the days are draining. Brent and I have small children at home. Yeah. Uh, we both have, well, you have a six year old son and I have a two year old. And, uh, that definitely keeps things busy. Like I, I, I get a little envious when I hear things like Dustin's dad was able to watch four seasons oh of Breaking God, Bad dude. in two weeks. And like my parents are telling me about all these shows they're binging and Kate and I are like, ah, like that sounds fun. Like to just be able to binge. Cause yeah. you do not have that luxury when you have a small child who needs, you know, constant no. entertainment and attention. So we're the same way. We, we, it's like nine o'clock. We got the kid put to bed and, we're just like, um, do we want to watch the new Westworld or do we want to like watch three episodes of the office because it requires a lot less brain power? Yeah. <laughs> so, that's exactly how we feel. Yeah. It's tough. Um, what else are you guys doing? Um, Matt, you, you built this whole drum studio behind you since quarantine started, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a bit of busy time. I'm, I'm working on, uh, on an educational website just based on the fact that we're probably going to be free, pretty free this year. Uh, or for the foreseeable future. Um, so I'm, I've always wanted to break down our songs on drums. I finally figured out a way to do it. So I'm going to be recording nice. um, footage, uh, which is actually, we were talking about being in good shape to play shows if it was tomorrow. I'd be in really good shape to play new songs, old stuff. I'd be like, <laughs> how do you play composure? Because <laughs> yeah. I, haven't, I haven't touched it in so long. But um, three different tempos per new song, and then you just, you learn... Nice you know, ABR stuff. So I needed a good setting for that. So I, wor I worked on this for like three weeks and then um, uh, teaching some lessons here and there and then, and then farming. Yeah. Your studio looks really good, dude. You it does thanks, man. Good. It looks good, but it sounds like trash. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it looks good, but it doesn't it does sound look good. good. Uh, <laughs> well you've learned so much dustin you're learning a lot right now too right you're you're learning some video some video stuff yeah i, I went ahead and invested in a nice camera so i can record better playthrough videos myself figured i was That's gonna sick. you know we're not doing anything and doesn't look as good on the phone so um so i've been like matt looking at youtube understanding how to set up <laughs> and, and yeah. shoot better and edit videos you know i got final cut um so i could edit stuff color correction is killing me it's it's so tough oh to man understand that what kind I, of camera did you get d i got a sony a7 uh three nice yeah, good for you fancy. man yeah so uh so i can shoot 4k uh it's it's awesome but i'm still learning a lot um i already had lights so i got like good lighting in here and then uh, like matt i kind of built up my studio as well i'm still hanging acoustic panels but um just kind of like upgrading my recording gear um so i can produce better sounding uh demos for us and, and help with like yeah. new tools for songwriting because right. the gear that i have was actually purchased for the demos that jb and i did when i was living at his place right the the, the town home um, 2010 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we did demos we did leveler demos for every song yeah and, uh, wow. that's wow that's the computer and that I have with the interface and everything. So that computer is a 2010 uh, and I can't update the operating system because then I'll lose Pro Tools 9 and Pro Tools 9 is so dated. So I'm like trying to upgrade everything so that I can have uh, newer The gear. latest and greatest, yeah. Yeah, I can't, I can't run, I can't record drums with this computer it's so dated it crashes it only has like four gigabytes of ram so oh geez i'm slowly upgrading and learning that stuff that that will definitely help and you know like matt doing his website and i'm um, trying to do educational stuff i just wanted to find a way to be more productive with my time so that's what i'm best thing in. yeah that's cool i'm kind of trying to do the same thing as far as learning uh some recording stuff not on dustin's level i'm like a big time noob um, when it comes to that which is funny because we've been doing this band for so long and Dustin and I have been writing the songs and making these demos. But for those of you who don't know, we've been, we record our demos, record, we program our demos <laughs> out in, in an archaic program called Tabit, which Click is like- them in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> record like this. <laughs> so, guitar tablature and then we do drum, you know, drum tab kind of stuff. And it's really archaic for 2020. Yeah, you can we have you know the mac yeah <laughs> it's a $200 right. PC. 
And, here, and here's mine. Right He's here. got a blue one. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we're we're working off of some old technology in that regard, and we're all really comfortable with it. Like everyone in the band is comfortable with it. Matt, you're you're used to like looking at it when you're learning new songs. Oh yeah, Brian, you're I know. Using it to learn yeah. guitars. Yeah. It's great. It <laughs> but, is nice. Yeah, it is great. But it's like I kind of want to start. Like, there's I. It, Dustin, you would probably agree. It, it can be limiting as far as inspiration goes because you cannot make the sounds that you want in Tabit, like especially when you want to get into like spacey stuff and um, with effects, and it, it's really limiting in that way. And so I'm starting to try to learn a little bit more recording. And not that I want to get away from Tabit because it's a great resource for all of us to learn our new material easily. Like we can just send a file to the rest of the band and everyone can sit there and at their own time and leisure and learn how to play the songs. Yeah. But yeah, I will great. say when you sent over the, uh, when you sent over some new music, yeah. my first thought was, I don't, I don't like this with, with programmed drums. <laughs> You're like, where's Tabit? Yeah, these, these, drums like, too, these drums don't sound fake enough. I, I was like, these drums sound too good. They sound yeah. too real, man. We we got to get the we gotta get, get the Tabit. You really think, that makes me feel good because I, I yeah. spend a lot of time trying to get the drums to sound decent. So I'm glad you thought they sounded <laughs> They sounded really good. It, it's not that I didn't like it. It was just like, wow, this is going to take some getting used to because now they sound like – it sounds playable. It doesn't sound like, oh my gosh, how many hands does JV think I have? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Well, I'm sure there's still parts like that going on in, in what I program for your drums. There's definitely going to be parts where you have a third hand and like you're dictating <laughs> something. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I saw that somewhere Logic was starting to do something that you could just like input, you could create things in MIDI and then it'll turn it into like tablature and sheet music somewhere in logic or something. Oh, like there that. is for sure. You, you can for sure do that kind of stuff, but yeah. I'm just, I'm so fast at tabbing and tabbit yeah. after doing it since 2005 that it, <laughs> it, and I'm pretty slow at programming in like the piano roll of a, of a doll. So I don't know if you feel the same way, Dustin, like it takes me a long time. I, I can tab a drum beat and tab it fast. Yeah. I can't, I can't like draw the notes in logic or pro tools very That's quickly yet. Can you writing in Tabit and then to export your MIDI, your drum MIDI to, um, right. to logic yes. and that way you drop it in there. It's already on the piano roll and you can just like adjust stuff if you wanted to. Yeah. I that's what I did on my most, most, re or, re most recent thing. Yeah. It's so much more time consuming to like program the drums in pro tools or logic for, for us. So, yep. But, well, let's talk about the band a little bit as far as what the future holds for us um, or what we may think the future holds for us um, without trying to get into any predicting of the future. Like I, none of us know when we're going to get back on the road because um, no one really knows anything right now. Um, and obviously the touring industry is going to be one of the later things to come along. You know, there's not a lot of social distancing going on in a, sold out concert hall um but what are what are you guys looking forward to most um when we are able to get back out there and start playing again uh i you know like we touched on it a little bit you know we ain't toured in a while we hadn't seen our friends in a while so we talked about like the crew guys and stuff like they're all our buddies and like guys in the band were all friends so being able to see our friends again <laughs> right. that'll be a, that'll be a huge plus that'll be nice um I mean, obviously making a living, um, you know, that's how we make money. So that will be obviously something to look forward to when we get back, uh, right. touring and the new songs, you know, playing these new songs, we just put a record that people seem to like, and, you know, we're looking at not being able to play them for anyone for a very long time. So that's, a, that, you know, that's frustrating. Yeah. Sure. yeah, I think everything that Brent said, I, I agree with um, playing new songs. I can't wait for that. And um, hanging out with friends uh, and really just traveling. I like waking up in a different city every day. And uh, uh, I miss doing that because it's we, we got to do it three times this year. So mm -hmm. yeah. looking forward to traveling again. <laughs> yeah. For people who are very used for people who are very used to being nomadic and then all of a sudden you're like have to stay at home and be extreme about it. So it's very, <laughs> it's very different. Yeah. 
I think, I think for me, it's the, it's uh, we, we put a lot into something and we haven't really, I don't really, I don't feel like we really reap the benefits of our investment. You know, we've written this record, recorded the record, put out the record. And it's like, man, we just want to get out there and play the record. Right. And um, to be, to be cut short of that, it feels like we're, it doesn't feel like we're, I don't feel like we're a band performing at the, level that we can be unless we're actually performing like yeah we're doing all the things yeah. a band can do right now we we have new music out there and we're, we're really active on social media but there's still this missing link um and then also us uh, alongside of that's like brent said the, <laughs> the fact that it's our job and you know paying bills and uh that on a personal level but also our crew i really feel for everyone in the entertainment industry all the guys in this band people that work for us i mean we all need to get back to work we all need this this is our job and um so once that happens again it's good it's going to be so it's going to be so relieving to actually just be able to put work in so that we know okay we we can still do this we still have this there's a future here because right now it just feels very um it, it, it feels like it's sort of out there and we know it's there, but man, we just can't wait to get out there and do it again. Yeah, totally. Um, I have one final question. I'm going to ask you guys um, unrelated to music. What, what are your thoughts on not having any sports right now? <laughs> how's that? How's that working out for you guys? It's terrible. It's, it's terrible. It's crazy. I mean, <laughs> if it carries into football season and you ask me that question, I'll be like, this is the worst. <laughs> Yeah. Oh right. man. But how good was dude, how good was the draft though? Like how fun was that just to be able to have something? I know that was nice. It had the highest yeah. ratings of all time too. I saw like it was yeah, the most watched NFL draft in the history of the of the league. Yeah. It's uh, crazy. I've, I've taken up marble racing. Uh it's a great, great, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dominoes. <laughs> sports, you know, you got to just got to adapt and find new sports. Uh, right. I see ESPN posted something today, actually, of like how this family invented their own Olympics. Uh, did anybody see that video by chance? No, oh, that's cool. you, know, you, know, like the, you know, like the water on your fridge when you hit the button and water comes out, obviously. So they had a cup under there underneath the water spigot. And what they were doing was there was a straw in it. And they were like, getting ready to suck the water out. And they turned the water on and then they started a timer and you had to like keep drinking the water. And then the moment the water overfilled over the glass, oh. that, was, that was your timer. Oh man. So, so like this whole family was doing that. They were like racing down the stairs. They had like a Roomba with knives on it, like going around poking balloons and like the last person's balloon that was still up. Like That's amazing. They this whole thing. And I was like, this is awesome. This is my new sport. They need to televise that. I would watch that. Yeah, it was That's true. Cool. <laughs> on YouTube. Were, weren't they talking about doing like a, uh, social distanced game of horse or something like getting some NBA stars together who would go into empty gyms and like play virtual horse. Oh, that's so great. That was talked about like a month ago and I haven't heard anything since. So I'm wondering if anything actually is going to come of that. Well, how are you doing without sports? I know this is like, this is like your time yeah. now. Like well, what, dude, what statistics are you taking on? I, I'm pretty <laughs> bummed. This is the, the, I was saying to Kate, my wife the other day, that this is like, all of my favorite things have been taken away, um, which, is, <laughs> yeah. I, which is the case for a lot of people. But um, yeah. sports are obviously my favorite pastime. And I'm a huge baseball fan and I love fantasy baseball. And I, you know, all of our fantasy baseball drafts were postponed or canceled or whatever. And I, I, I've I found that I have gotten back into music, as funny as that is, because music sort of took over as a kid, I was way into sports and then I got super into music and, and the music scene and doing, doing the band and stuff. And that became like my biggest hobby and how I spent the most, the majority of my time. And then I got way back into sports once, you know, I had a solid career here with, with you guys in August French red. And now that sports have been taken away again, like I'm finding myself going back to music. I'm listening to a lot more music. I'm watching a lot of music documentaries on TV and it's almost like reignited my love for music, which is cool. And I also yeah. think it's good for me as a, as a songwriter and because it's inspirational to listen to music. And I had been spending all of my free time listening to sports podcasts and watching sports and doing fancy sports mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And now I don't have that. So I'm, I'm spending a lot more time with music again, which is nice. And I, and I've enjoyed getting reacquainted with a lot of, you know, records I haven't listened to in a long time, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. 
So yeah, a lot, and a lot of the interviews that we've been doing just with this record, that's like one of the big things the guys who are doing the interviews are like, yeah, like we just encourage people to listen to music because it's such a good mood enhancer. <laughs> like if, right. if you have a bad day, like just watch, you know, listen to a, a hour of your favorite band instead of, you know, you turn on the news right now and it's just the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. It's so depressing. And it's like, just replace some of your news watching with music. And it, it definitely helps, you know, in the mornings, like we'll turn on the news for like 10 minutes, make sure nothing has changed. And then we just put on usually the radio or something like that. We'll put us put the speaker on down in the kitchen and cook breakfast while we listen to music versus just watching TV. Yeah, that's probably good advice. Um, well, guys, I want to say for our singer, Jake, he wishes that he could be here with us. He actually had to do a, he's, he's in a meeting right now with his nonprofit, which is called Heart Support. And I wanted to let you guys know about Heart Support real quick. It's a nonprofit he does to um, support those who are dealing with abuse or mental illness um, or addiction, things like that in their lives. Um, it's a community where you can go and get help. So obviously a lot of us are, this is a, a very strange time that I know a lot of people are struggling with, um, you know, isolation and, and just a lot of worries and anxiety in the world right now. So if you are someone who might be uh, dealing with something like that, definitely go check out heartsupport.com. Um, and I think there's a lot of good resources on there for you, but Jake says hi to you guys. He wishes he could have been here, but he's, uh, he's doing some other important stuff right now. Um, and I wanted to say, once again, if you guys feel like donating to the Live Nation Relief Fund um, to help help all these uh, working crew guys out during this time, that'd be awesome. And thank you to my bandmates, Matt Brent and Dustin, for taking the time today to hang out. And um, and thank you for taking the time to watch this. We hope you guys stay safe and stay healthy. And uh, hopefully we can see you at a concert before too long. Yeah. See you soon. Thanks yeah. a lot. Bye-bye.